Hi guys, as you can see from the title, today we're going to be looking at Operation Grapple, specifically the uniform worn by Royal Navy ratings uh, aboard ship, op observing the operation. The operation itself was primarily a responsibility of the Royal Air Force, who not only provided the Vickers Valiant Force, uh, which dropped the various devices uh, in the test series, but also um, research aircraft for sampling um, and observation. The Navy formed a much more supportive role than it had done in previous tests where it had taken more of a lead, notably at Montebello. And the Army took on its normal supportive ro role in providing camps and the facilities and so forth to allow the operation to take place in the remote Pacific. You can see here from the period footage uh, Royal Navy personnel on deck uh, taking the precautions that were uh, deemed necessary before the blast took place, turning away from the blast, covering their eyes, uh, and then standing up and facing the blast when it was deemed safe to do so. The uniform consists of the then standard Royal Navy working dress, uh, action working dress, or number eight dress as it was also known, which as you can see here consists of a lighter blue shirt with dark navy blue trousers. The shirt is of a type introduced in the mid 1950s with pleated pockets and concealed buttons on the pocket flaps. And the trousers are the first type of uh, number eight action working dress trousers introduced uh, in 1945 when this uniform was first brought out. And you can see they have a double buckle fastening at the waist, similar to tropical clothing of the period. In addition to this basic uniform, anti-flash gear is also worn, consisting of a hood, which you can see here, um, with the addition of dark goggles uh, worn over the eyes for protection. The procedure when the atomic blast took place was to face away from the blast, covering the already protected eyes with the hands, and yet service personnel who were involved report seeing the bones of their hands uh, through the, from the flash shining through their skin and through the goggles. Uh, despite the fact they were facing away from the burst. Further down we can see the white gloves which were also part of the anti-flash equipment and the hood and gloves themselves form part of the standard anti-flash equipment which was worn by uh, Royal Navy personnel at action stations by this point. The goggles are the only real addition to this for the uh, tests off Christmas Island. Further down the uniform we can see the Royal Navy issue ankle boots which were standard at the time. Uh, in contrast to Army issue boots they don't have a toe cap as you can see. Worn very casually over the left shoulder is the Mark VI respirator haversack, uh, Mark VI A in fact for naval issue haversack um, for use with the long hose respirator. Not everyone seems to have carried respirators and some personnel seem to have carried the light anti-gas respirator. I'm including the, the general service respirator, the long hose general service respirator here for completeness. I don't quite understand why not everyone had them and why only some had them. The, this is for men who are all on deck at the same time. I would presume it was a precaution in case of drift of fallout, an unpredicted drift of fallout. Um, and obviously the, the filter would protect you to a degree from particulates, uh, but I can't see any logic in that if not everyone had a respirator on them. So uh, a little bit of a question mark there for anyone who might know. And we'll look now at the contents of the haversack. Okay, so here we have the Mark VI uh, A haversack, um, which is the naval issue example. Um, still has the waist belt on it as used during the Second World War and prior to the Second World War to secure the uh, bag at the hip. We'll just loosen that off as you saw in the photographs. Um, this is uh, attached around the bag when not in use uh, in the manner I have done. See here the black st stripe across which indicates a uh, naval issue. Uh, if you look underneath here under the flap you'll see it's marked Mark 6 VIA there, um, 1941 dated. And inside the main compartment, the main point of interest is the long hose uh, Mark IV respirator face piece, obviously with the stockinette cover still on it, a mix of um, both this and the Mark V, uh, which obviously the plain black rubber face piece would be in use, still with the standard E6 filter there. Uh, you can see in there, um, this one's a 1940 date, for example, uh, on top, uh, yeah, 1940 on the bottom plate as well there. E6 at the bottom you can see. Final item to look at of course by way of completeness uh, is underwear and we have a pair of period white cotton drawers here and a pair of black cotton socks. 
So there we have it, the uniform worn by Royal Navy ratings observing the uh, Operation Grapple series of tests aboard ship. Um, basically the standard working uniform, as I say, of the period. I thought it was a good way of showing the number 8 uniform being worn uh, and showing anti-flash in use. And also, uh, it's an interesting, the operation itself is interesting from a historical point of view. And this might prompt people to go and have a look at, there are some documentaries and things available on YouTube if you're interested in seeing more. And some of this footage obviously comes from the original test footage. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to a couple of interesting documentaries on this uh, series of tests. So that's all from me for now. It's true, of course, that the H-bomb makes a terrifying impact on the mind of man. It may well prove to be man's greatest hope for peace. It offers perhaps the ultimate deterrent. For surely only a madman, deliberately courting certain destruction in reprisal, would dare to initiate an all-out nuclear war.